population. If one country could be the microcosm of everything that went wrong in the years before the meltdown, Iceland is it. It is a place of staggering natural beauty. From its geysers, to its waterfalls, to its famous Blue Lagoon, it is a magnet for tourists. One thing Iceland was never known for was banking and high finance, at least until a few years ago. Iceland was transformed through the ideas of one man, longtime Prime Minister David Odson. He decided to shake Iceland out of its social democratic past and remake the country according to his free market principles. He surrounded himself with like-minded admirers. David Odson is somebody who fulfills the two criteria that uh, uh, Machiavelli uh, puts uh, up about uh, political leaders. He is cunning as a fox and he's courageous as a lion. David Odson wanted to privatize almost everything touched by government. Iceland's number one resource industry has always been fishing. Odson parceled up the country's fishing grounds and passed them off to big ship owners. On Egil Helgeson's popular political TV show, the reaction was disbelief. For many people this would sound as it's almost surreal. You take the, the fishing grounds, the fish that swims in the sea, and you give it to a bunch of people who own ships for, uh, for good. This is, this is the main resource of our country. This was the beginning of, uh, of, of what came later. In 2003, Odson made his most controversial privatization. Some of the biggest banks in the country were auctioned off in suspicious circumstances. Coincidentally, they ended up in the hands of some of David Odson's closest friends. Mr. Odson's friends were father and son who came from Russia with some money they had made from uh, shady dealings in the brewery business in, in St. Petersburg. And suddenly they were, found themselves to be the owners of the oldest bank in Iceland. These guys didn't know the first thing about banking. Uh, in retrospect, they're either greedy criminals or complete fools. The newly privatized Icelandic banks embarked on an orgy of dangerous financial practices. Bankers sold securities back and forth to each other at vast markups that falsely inflated their value. All Icelanders were encouraged to buy a house, or even two. The central bank lowered interest rates, flooding the country with easy credit. As in the United States, this triggered an unprecedented real estate boom. Icelanders living and working abroad came home to take advantage of the wild market. I lived in the UK till 2003, 2004. Then I came home. I bought a flat for 9 million kroner here downtown, almost close to where we are now. One and a half years later, I sell it for almost 15 million kroner. I'm like, hey, what's, what's going on? I've done nothing to this flat. And here we are, six million kroner in my pocket, just for keeping it for one and a half years. And of course, when you're, when you're benefiting from it, you're sort of, okay, well, this is great. There's a saying now, if something is extravagant, oh, this is so 2007, you can't be serious. 2007 is having Elton John in your 50th birthday party as one of the business tycoons did. People just went too far. People took one loan too many. People bought one car too many. Iceland was not alone in its reckless financial planning during the boom years. 